but I never dreamt of becoming a banker or a central banker. And I didn't aspire to be BSP governor. I, I think if one looks at how I evolved in the BSP, basically I was just doing the next best thing all along. I just stayed on and on and on right? until I uh, stepped down as central bank governor after uh, 43 years in the central bank. Uh, 12 years of which as governor. I would say one of the biggest challenges in my career at the central bank, I was not yet even deputy governor, I was managing director. No? But as head of treasury, I had to deal with the impact of the Asian financial crisis in 1997-1998. And as you probably remember, the currencies of the ASEAN five countries all collapsed one by one because of speculative attacks on these currencies. What we learned from the Asian financial crisis and the measures that we implemented at that time in response to the Asian financial crisis served us well during the global financial crisis. All the reforms that we implemented, the, the um, policy frameworks the, that we had adopted to make our economies more resilient and less vulnerable to external shocks, floating exchange rates, better banking regulation, right after the Asian financial crisis. Starting first quarter of 1990, the Philippine economy started to grow continuously up to today without any interruption of negative growth. So if you look at the quarterly growth from Q1 1998 to Q1 2019, that's the latest we have, that's 81 consecutive quarters of positive economic growth. And I think this is in part due to the uh, policies that were adopted by the central bank, by the BSP. That's one of my, I guess, my rewards no? for having served in the BSP. Policy makers or in government, actually their actions affect large segments of the population because this is a public policy. And the, the main objectives of the BSP touch upon the everyday concerns of the people, like consumer prices and uh, banking services. Despite all the achievements, he remains humble. He always uh, attributes it to the BSP team, not solely his own or his personal achievement, but rather the achievement of the institution. You've got very good, highly qualified and committed people in the BSP. And we've tried to develop this over time, you know, because part of the capacity building, it's always said that people are the best asset of a company. It sounds like a cliche, but it remains true up to now. And I think he had he run a, a tight ship. And I think one of the things I admire about him, and I never got to tell him that, was that I felt that he knew instinctively what the more important things were to prioritize. In my view, that's an indication of an outstanding leader. I think if you ask me to describe my years in the Ateneo, I would say that they've been extraordinary and multidimensional. That uh, helped me mold you know, the values and the priorities that provided the anchor for my decisions later on in my career. Of course, the academic side remained the central focus. That's why we're in school, right? And the quality of an Ateneo is legendary. I uh, benefit from that uh, education as a scholar. Service has always been at the center of my career. So the things that I learned here, uh, service to others, the usual man for others, has always been there. Um, can I ask you to uh, allow me to open my video? Yes. Sorry, I'm 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 not allowed. I'm not I'm not being allowed to start my video. Oh. 
Okay, you're on. You're on. on. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Juan Paterno, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to this special event, Scholars Matter to the Nation celebrating the Governor Amando M. Tetanko Scholarship Fund. I would like to thank you for joining us in this virtual gathering honoring Governor Tetanko, an Athenian whose contributions to the financial industry, to our country, has steered the Philippines to decades of economic stability and prosperity. We will begin with the singing of the national anthem to be followed by an invocation. Let's hear from our Tyrus Chairman, Dr. Cecilio Pedro. 
uh, video, please. Okay. Uh, let me greet first uh, Father Bobby Yap, President Ateneo University, Governor Armando Petanco, the most outstanding uh, governor of uh, Central Bank we ever had, distinguished uh, board members of uh, <clears throat> Ateneo University, uh, headed by uh, Ma'am uh, Bernadine C., Chairman of uh, the Board, distinguished uh, members of uh, Ateneo Scholarship Board, donors, friends, ladies, and gentlemen, magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. We still have two minutes before six. Today, uh, we come together to celebrate first the assumption of uh, Father Bobby Yap as president of Ateneo University and also as honorary chairman of the Ateneo Scholarship Foundation. As Father Jet was instrumental in helping the Scholarship Foundation in generating more than 40 million the past two years, 40 million pesos for our scholarship fund. We believe uh, Father Bobby yep, will likewise help us in moving the level higher and hopefully generating more funds to help deserving students. We are also here, more importantly, to acknowledge the contribution of uh, Governor Tetanko for allowing us to use his good name in soliciting donations for the scholarship fund. Alam niyo po, this is a very difficult period, the period of coronavirus, where truly people are having a hard time sustaining their business. So it is truly a challenge to generate funds for our scholarship foundation. But all of these uh, remarkable uh, Athenians, including board members of Ateneo University and Ateneo Scholarship Board, board are inspiring. In spite of wow. these difficult times, we are still generating funds for the scholarship foundation in honor of our uh, Governor Armando Tetanco. It is my prayer and sincere hope that uh, we will continue this trust of uh, generating funds and continue this important mission and vision of helping deserving students to study in Ateneo. And hopefully in the process, we will see more Governor Tetanko in the years to come in so doing, helping our country to move forward. So again, in behalf of uh, the ASF, let me thank Again, our beloved uh, Governor Tetanko for allowing us, our beloved scholar, allowing us to use your name. Dapat itong meeting nito should be uh, in a fine dining restaurant. That was originally planned. We're supposed to have uh, dinner and fine wines to celebrate this event. And it's also the birthday of Governor Tetanko. So again, let me greet Governor Tetanko a very, very very happy birthday. It is also my prayer that this coronavirus should be over soon as the vaccine is now available. Hopefully in the next few months, it will be available here in the Philippines. But let us work together 
let us generate funds and let us help the university. So again, let me welcome all of you to this wonderful event in Zoom. And thank you for joining us this afternoon and this evening in this wonderful celebration. Maraming maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat. A pleasant good afternoon. Can I have the video, please? Thank you, uh, Chairman Cecilio Pedro. And now, uh, let me hand this over to the President of Ateneo de Manila University, Father Bobby Up of the Society of Jesus. Father Bobby. Good evening. Investing in essence is an act of faith. You give your resources, time, and sometimes even yourself in building up something like a company or a business because you have faith that it has a ch great chance of growth and that you'll get some form of reward down the road. Scholarships are also investments, but it is of a special kind. It is an investment in people and in the future. It is putting faith in someone, most likely a stranger, that he or she one day will become successful in his or her chosen career and an agent of positive change in society. It is honestly one of the best investments you can make. We don't have to look further for proof. Former Banco Central ng Pilipinas Governor Amando M. Tetanko Jr. is one of the most influential central bankers we've had in recent history. A two-term BSP governor, honored several times as one of the world's top central bankers and helped steer our country's economy to greater heights under two presidents. One little known fact, however, is that Governor Sai Tetanko himself was once a scholar here in Ateneo de Manila. Back when he was in college, generous souls saw in him a great untapped potential and through a scholarship invested in ensuring he got the best education possible. They put their faith in the Ateneo student named Amando Tetanko Jr. in their belief that this kid deserved a little extra push so he can go on and make a difference in the world. Their investment paid off very well indeed. But I guess never in their wildest dreams did they ever think the young man whom they helped would later have his signature on our country's banknotes. I believe Governor Tatanko's accomplishments and his impact on our economy would not have been possible without the scholarship that helped him finish college in the first place. His story is just one of many success stories of Ateneo scholarship recipients who now help steer our economy and our country and have major influence in our society. Indeed, our scholars can be found in boardrooms, in critical government offices, in the biggest art venues, in the top laboratories and research institutions. You name it, most likely there will be a former Ateneo scholar leading and calling the shots. Scholars matter to the nation. I couldn't agree more. Each young Filipino has an unlimited potential to contribute to our common good. And one way to realize this is through learning. However, not everyone has the means to get a quality education, let alone an Ateneo education. Scholarships level the playing field, helping fulfill the dreams and aspirations of more young individuals who otherwise would not be able to afford a top-notch college education, setting them on the path towards success. We thank each and every one of the generous donors who have contributed to the Amando M. Tetanko Scholarship Fund. Thank you for putting your faith 
in our youth and putting your faith in Ateneo de Manila's brand of education. We hope that more people like you would invest in our students' futures and give them an extra boost in their path to become persons for and with others in the service of the nation. A special thank you to the Ateneo Scholarship Foundation for leading this wonderful campaign for the AMT Scholarship Fund. Thank you especially Cecilio Pedro, Mon Paterno, and the ASF Board. Naming the Scholarship Fund after Governor Sai, who celebrates his birthday today, is a great way to thank his service to the country and to honor his achievements. I hope current and future Ateneo scholars will see him as a role model, inspiring them to help steer our nation towards inclusive and sustainable progress for generations to come. Congratulations on the success of the Scholarship Fund, and may God bless us all. Maraming salamat po. Thank you, Father Bobby. You know, you're right. Financial aid is truly life-changing. There are no words to describe how one's generosity can make a difference in a student's life. And the man we are honoring today can attest to that. Uh, before we turn over the spotlight to the man of the hour, allow me to share this video of two ardent patrons, two of the largest donors who share in our commitment in supporting future generations of Filipinos to lead eventually our country's economy. Father Jetty Larin, former president, Father Bobby Yap, current president of ADMU. Benefactors, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. It is an honor for us to be part of the Governor Amando M. Tetanko Jr. Scholarship Fund. The SM Group has always been a strong believer and an active benefactor of student scholarships. We believe education is a great uh, equalizer. To date, we have given grants to a lot of graduates and students. This particular fund, however, is significant because it honors what many of us consider to be one of the best central banker in the world, who is himself a, a scholar of Ateneo. It is therefore uh, a great pleasure for us to know that this fund will be educating individuals who, who may become the next achiever in the mold of Governor Sai Tetanko. In closing, I would like to extend my personal greetings to Governor Sai on this special occasion. Happy birthday, Governor Sai. Thank you for all the trust and support you have provided us all these years in BDO and in SM Group, and for all your contributions to the economy. Thank you for providing us this opportunity to contribute to the next generations of achievers. May you continue to live a long, happy, and healthy life, and we wish you all the best on your birthday. Happy birthday, Governor Sai Tetanko. On behalf of Capitan, Dr. Lucio Tan, Philippine National Bank, and the Tanya T Foundation, we're very happy to note that on your special day, you are transferring the funds from the Amato Tetanko Foundation to the Ateneo. The group is a big believer in education. We're definitely sure that the Ateneo is going to be able to provide to the right students, those that are unable to get the financial blessings now to have the ability to study and be part of nation building. We are definitely sure that they will soon have another Lux in Domino awarding, just like yourself, by helping those underprivileged to be able to have good 
education. Thank you. Making educational opportunities within reach of deserving students would not have been possible without the generous support of our donors. And for that, we thank Tessie and WIC and all our other benefactors whose magnanimity and generosity will help enrich the lives of talented undergrad students by giving them an Ateneo education. Moving right along, with a career spanning over 40 years, Governor Tatanko has played a key role in the country's financial system. He has received awards for his valuable contributions to the financial industry. And as we discussed, he's an Ateneo scholar graduating in 1973 with a degree in AB economics. Inspired by his story, in 2018, we began planting the seeds for the Governor Amando Tetanko Scholarship Fund. It is with pride and gratitude to share with you that we have raised 22 million pesos to date. It is our fervent hope that through this gift, more young Filipinos will be inspired by the life of Governor Tetanko and use their Ateneo education to truly be men and women for others. It is only fitting that we honor Governor, Governor Tetanko on his birthday. Friends, Join me in welcoming the man of the hour, the world's best central banker, the recipient of Ateneo de Manila's Lux in Domino Award, Governor Amando Tetanco Jr. Governor. Thank you very much, Mon, uh, for those kind words. A pleasant Saturday evening to everyone. And thank you all for joining this event. Ateneo President Father Bobby Yap, former President Father Jet Villarin, if he's already around. Ateneo Board of Trustees, uh, headed by Chair Bern C. ASF Chairman Cecilio Pedro, our dear benefactors, officials and faculty of the Ateneo, guests and friends. Let me begin by thanking the Ateneo Scholarship Foundation for the initiative to start this snowball endeavor, particularly the brains behind it. Uh, ASF Chairman Cecilio Pedro and Vice Chairman Bon Paterno. And certainly the scholarship fund would not have taken concrete form without the crucial support of our generous benefactors and donors who share the same commitment to increase access to quality, top-notch education. Thank you. I also thank the Ateneo other father, under Father Jet Villarin and Father Bobby Yap for their encouragement and guidance through the whole process of creating the fund and up to now. I'm deeply humbled and immensely grateful for this honor of being made uh, an eponym of this scholarship fund, which aims to provide the opportunity for deserving students to pursue an Ateneo college education, particularly in the very important fields of economics, management, and related fields. Our collective effort could, have, could not have been better timed the pandemic and the containment measures that are being taken exact at all on the livelihood of many. By taking some of the financial pressure off from students and their families, particularly those affected by the crisis, we can help those who want to earn their Ateneo degree and give back to society. I was a central banker for a total of 43 years rising through the ranks until I was appointed governor and served in that capacity in my last 12 years at the bank. My life as a central banker, however, 
did not just begin when I joined the BSP. I'd like to think it was part of a journey that has been shaped in large part by the excellent Jesuit education I obtained as an Ateneo scholar for, it, for which I'm indeed very grateful. In that sense, with your kind and generous support, we are paying forward by making it possible for other deserving students to enjoy the same privilege. I could not therefore ask for a better birthday gift than the launching of this scholarship fund today. We understand and appreciate the value of education and its linkage with growth. A skilled workforce is essential to business success. Abilities such as analytical skills and communication, which are acquired through years of studies and training, are essential components of what is referred to in economics as human capital. Education enhances human capital in two critical ways. First, education supports innovation, which in turn enhances the productivity of labor. Second, education allows workers to use technologies more effectively and efficiently, leading to economies of scale and improved overall productivity. This linkage has been long underscored by economists. In fact, theoretical and empirical evidence supporting such relationship are considerable. For instance, the canon of modern economic growth theory, the augmented solo swan growth model, identifies human capital as one of the most important drivers of economic growth. Likewise, a plethora of empirical studies have confirmed the positive correlation, even causal relationship between education and economic growth. That said, I wish to talk more about what can be considered as a more indirect, but arguably more important linkage between education and growth, the pursuit of the common good. The common good is defined by both religion and social sciences as the collective aspiration that benefits all members of society. Why does the common good matter for growth and how can education, particularly the study of economics and related fields, reinforce this relationship? In the past decades, no other model for our societies has been more dominant than the market economy. This model puts forward the idea that markets are rational and thus even when left alone can drive economic growth by ensuring that resources are allocated efficiently. The market economy's emphasis on competitive forces drives down costs and increases household purchasing power. It creates incentives to reduce, to reduce costs through innovation, trade, and transfer of technology. More importantly, market forces can also provide the needed funding to a country's development priorities, which in turn can lead to increasing investments, job creation, higher income, and standards of living. Unfortunately, the global, the, the global financial crisis has painfully shown us that while rational and efficient markets are necessary, they are not a sufficient condition for sustainable growth. Sometimes the so-called wisdom of the crowd can be overwhelmed by the madness of the mob. Markets, when left unfettered, could lead to significant distortions and misalignments that could hurt society. Such failure has led to a certain amount of distrust and sometimes coupled with a degree of outrage for our existing economic systems. These issues resonate more loudly Given our current circumstances marked by economic recessions stemming from the COVID-19 pandemic, increased unemployment and inequality, climate change, and the rise of populist sentiment all over the world. For many observers, such discontent 
stems from the market's benign neglect for the common good. Markets can and must incorporate in their objectives concern about the common good. To my mind, this is where the role of education, in particular the study of economics and related fields, can play a crucial role. We might ask, how can ec economics help us get back on track? After the recent spate of prices in the past decades, do we really need more economists, financial market players, and managers? Thomas Carlyle, the famous Scottish writer who regarded economics as the dismal science, criticized economics as a discipline unable to solve the many social ills present across the world. For an ordinary Filipino, it would not be difficult to see the current environment through the lens of Carlyle. Despite the massive progress we have achieved in the past century with advancements in technology, the rise of automation, the dramatic improvement in healthcare, still major economic and social problems such as poverty and, and equality remain prevalent. I'd like to argue that economics, despite its shortcomings, when done correctly, can help address society's fundamental problems and lead us towards the common good. Dust off any old economics textbook or search the definition of economics in Google. And the first thing you'll see is this, economics is the social science that deals with the allocation and distribution of scarce resources to serve and satisfy human wants and needs. From this definition, you can easily see that among all sciences, economics is one of the few, if not the only field, that tries to tackle human welfare directly. It teaches us how people react, how systems of collaboration can function better, and how to maximize production of goods and services that can contribute to human welfare. In other words, economics purpose is to serve society by helping us to understand and solve complex issues to achieve the common good. In fact, the most important concepts in economics allude to the common good or some form of it. Take for instance, the most popular phrase economists often quit. There's no such thing as a free lunch. This expression describes the fundamental cost of consumption and conveys the idea that any economic decision has some cost paid by somebody in society. This causes people to carefully consider the economic consequences of their actions. The concept of uh, Pareto optimality, which is fundamental to our understanding of welfare, also reminds us of this idea. Under this premise, the economic state is at equilibrium where an economic activity of one agent cannot adversely affect the economic situation of another. The prisoner's dilemma, a paradox in game theory, wherein two individuals acting on their own self-interests end up worse off is another concept. According to this concept, the best outcomes are achieved when you consider what is the best for the entire group and not just for your and not just your own self-interest. In fact, formal game theory is uh, basically about how collective and collaborative actions are more encompassing than the actions of one. At the same time, economic theory informs us that a few misbehaving agents may shift the equilibrium drastically and lead to less optimal levels of welfare. This is a reminder that it is our duty to avoid straying from the pursuit of the common good, for this will lead to better outcomes for all, not just the chosen few. In all these concepts, we start to understand that while economics at its exterior is about the maximization of self-interest. When we start to think of the economy as a whole, 
It is but inevitable that individual self-interests need to adjust in a manner that promotes the common good to enable society to continually progress. This is, uh, as the Bank for International Settlements calls it, enlightened self-interest. Beyond reinforcing the value of the common good, Sean Theroux, a Nobel Prize winning economist, identified two ways how economics can contribute to the pursuit of the common good. First, economics can help identify the common good through its objective reliance on data. Among other social sciences, economics relies most heavily on mathematical and statistical methods. For us to identify the common good, it is necessary to have an accurate depiction of our economic reality and identify causal relations among variables. In this regard, mathematics and econometrics are necessary for empirical validation. And second, once the common good is identified and agreed upon, economics can develop tools that can help in achieving it. Well, I can say that I saw this in my more than four decades of central banking. Achieving stable prices that would benefit all Filipinos involved two important things. One, identifying the optimal inflation target by carefully measuring and analyzing macroeconomic data. And two, achieving the target by choosing and calibrating the monetary and financial policy tools at the central bank's disposal, informed by the relevant data gathered. Indeed, economics, when done properly, does not only serve private and individual interests, nor does it serve uh, those who impose their own values on the state to pursue their own interest. Rather, it aims to make the world, the world a better place through the pursuit of the common good. So to answer the question I raised earlier, do we need more people study economics, management, and related fields? Now more than ever, the answer is a resounding yes. And this event represents that important step towards pursuing the common good by making it possible for eligible students to study economics and learn how it can be used for today's benefit at the Ateneo. Again, a big thank you to all our benefactors who have helped generously to the Ateneo Scholarship Fund and the Ateneo de Manila University. Thank you and good evening. Thank you, Governor Tetanko, for inspiring and supporting us. And uh, the next generation of economic students, um, all who will be Filipino leaders who will lead this country to greater heights. The timing could not be more important. The Amando Tetanko Scholarship Fund can create meaningful change, not just in the lives of these students, but also in our communities. Before we end the program, I'd like to invite everyone to a virtual toast. Let's lift our glasses for the man whose achievements are remarkable and has been a great source of inspiration for many Athenians, economists and non-economists alike. Governor Tetanko, you are the epitome of brilliance, honesty, integrity, and compassion. May you continue to be blessed and be a blessing to others. Mabuhay, Sai, and happy birthday. Thank you. Mabuhay, and happy birthday. Mabuhay, mabuhay. Thank you to everyone. Thank you, Ma. <laughs>
Unmute. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Unmute. 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 Can you hear? 